Welcome to an industry segment of the Daybreak Show. I am Olola De Soyaolu. MTN plans to list its Nigerian unit worth $5.23 billion by July in a debut IPO on the Lagos bus and will raise fresh funds to reduce debt according to pre-IPO presentations seen by Reuters. MTN aims to raise at least $400 million from the IPO to pay preference shareholders and is preparing to file application to the Securities and Exchange Commission to launch the offer after getting approvals from the existing investors last week. Nigeria's biggest telecoms operator plans to go on roadshow between May and June 2018, according to the presentation and the list on Nigeria's bus between June and July. It will now need to appoint professional parties to the offer. MTN Nigeria has around 402 million shares in issue, the same amount in preference shares which it sold at $0.99 in 2007. As part of the IPO, it will split one share into 50 units to create 20 billion shares which will be listed on the boss and set the IPO price via book building. A major brand in the agro allied sector, Presco PLC, has bagged an award for its sustained dividend payment policy in the last 10 years. The award was given at the maiden edition of Dividend Payment Awards for Nigeria's listed companies by Third Observers Nigeria Limited. Presco, a key player in the agro allied sector of the Nigerian Stock Exchange, specializes in the cultivation of oil palm and the extraction refining and fractionation of palm oil into finished products. The company's administration and relationships manager, Tony Uwaje, says the company will sustain ongoing expansion drive in the interest of all stakeholders and consolidate on its dividend payment policy. The company in 2010, according to him, increased its refinery fractionation capacity to 100 tons per day to enable it cope with increased production from the plantation and increasing demand from customers. Facebook Chief Executive Officer Mark Zuckerberg sold nearly $500 million in the company's shares in February to fund its philanthropic investment vehicle, the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative. The move is part of Zuckerberg's plan to expedite stock sales to fund the initiative is set up in December 2015 with his wife, Priscilla Chan. Zuckerberg's foundation is similar to those set up by Microsoft Corp uh, Corp founder Bill, Bill Gates and his wife, Melinda Gates, and the Buffett Foundation formed by billionaire Warren Buffett. Two security feelings on Thursday showed that Zuckerberg sold 685,000 shares worth $125.4 million in the last three days of February. This had taken its total sales in the month to about 2.7 million shares worth $482.2 million. Zuckerberg said in September he would sell 35 million to 75 million shares of Facebook over the next 18 months. That would amount to up to $13 billion based on Facebook's current share price. The Silicon Valley billionaire has said he will donate 99% of his Facebook shares to CZI worth about $45 billion when the initiative was formed. Seven directors of Nigerian Aviation Handling Company NACO PLC have been adjudged to meet the corporate governance standard set by the corporate governance rating system. NACO's directors, who were awarded the CGRS certificate, included the company's chairman, Usman Arabi Bello, and two other directors, Tijani Ahmed Weiss and Ms. Adiza Aliko Muhammad. The former directors, including former managing director Kaudi Ulua Shegmojo, Gordon Gothwin, E.K. Iwachiku and Alaji Farouk Umar also backed the awards. The CGRS is an initiative between the Nigerian Stock Exchange and the Convention on Business Integrity. It is designed to rate quartered companies and the directors on corporate governance practices. NACO Managing Director Mrs. Mr. Idris Yakubu says that certification confirms the high corporate governance principles 
on which the operations of the company are based. Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC, has sanctioned some telecommunications firms for allegedly engaging in fraudulent practices. The regulator accused the firms of coal masking, coal refilling, and simboxing. The sharp sanctions include a suspension of the Interconnect Clearinghouse license issued to Medallion Communications Limited for a period of 90 days. In the first stance, also, the commission issued a strong warning to interconnect Clearinghouse Lanterman Limited, Disconnected Information Connectivity Solution Limited, and Solid Interconnectivity Services Limited from all networks until they regularize their operations. Others are issuance of warning letters to Exchange Telecoms Limited, Nikon's Limited, and Breeze Micro Limited against engaging in the fraudulent practices. The Commission also banned over 750,000 numbers assigned to several private network links and local exchange operator licenses, which number ranges were found to have been utilized for the practice. NCC's Director of Pub Public Affairs, Tony Ojobo, explains that the alleged fraudulent practice involved disguising international calls as local ones in order to profit from price differentials between international and local calls. He says that apart from the resultant loss of revenue by service providers, the practice also has negative security implications. NIPCO PLC has backed an oil and gas industry award for its unprecedented acquisition of ExxonMobil stake in the mobile oil Nigeria PLC. The award was the highlight of the Made in Nigeria International Petroleum Summit held in Abuja. Permanent Secretary in the Petroleum Resources Ministry, Dr. Fulasha De Yemiojo, presenting the award, says the deal to acquire ExxonMobil stake in Mobile Oil Nigeria with KPMG offering consultancy support was adjudged by a team of assessors as the largest deal in the downstream sector in 2017. According to her, KPMG was given the job to ensure extreme fairness, diligence and acceptability locally and also globally. The government, according to her, had no hand in the selection process and the final determination of eventual winners, stressing that KPMG only brought the award recipient list a few hours to the award from the Lagos corporate office. Earlier, while presenting the list to the gathering, KPMG Associate Director Tukumbo Shinowo explains that the award process was very transparent with set parameters for all categories of award, adding that there were no interference of any sort from anywhere. According to her, KPMG, in view of its pedigree in management consulting, was very fair to all categories of operators and was mindful of international best practices in its selection process. She noted that after setting all parameters for the selections, none of the nominees and eventual winners had a pre-knowledge of what of any interference that could affect the entire process. A few stories we've got for you on brands and industry segment of the Derek Show. Don't forget, at a quarter past nine, it will be time for the open day edition of the Derek Show. Stay tuned. My name is Odoladi Soyalu.